If you and I know the way, why aren't we guiding people the way, the truth? And the way that they can have life and have it in abundance. Are we attracted to Jesus because of what and who he is? Accomplished to draw man back into ourselves, to draw them out of the hands of the enemy, to bring them back to your glory. Is there any other way? Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Amen. Let's open up in prayer and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for each and every person here, Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you got them here safely, Lord. I pray for all of those who are missing tonight, Heavenly Father, whether they're stuck in traffic or they're still at home, Lord, I just pray that all is well with them, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who will be watching online. Heavenly Father, we just pray, Lord, that their ears and their eyes and their heart will be open to receive what you have for them, Lord. Lord, I am to myself. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that I have the honor and the privilege of speaking your word, your truth, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this message, Lord, and thank you, Heavenly Father, so much for your word that's truth that transforms our lives, Heavenly Father. I give you all the honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, so we are in chapter 11, Acts chapter 11. Man, so we're almost, we're getting through the book of Acts here pretty quick, guys. So if you have your Bibles with you, let's go ahead and Open up our Bibles and start reading in Acts chapter 11. I am reading from the New King James Version, so whatever version you have, it might be a little bit different. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start. Now the apostles and the brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them? But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying. In a trance I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheet let down from heaven by the four corners, and it came to me. When I observed it intently and considered, I saw four-footed animals of the earth wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice say to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed you must not call common. Is Am I too loud, you guys, or is that okay? Okay, there's a little bit of an echo. There's an echo. It's not an echo. It's a mom's phone. <laughs> That's okay, mom. That's okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, so now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. And then the Spirit of the Lord told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into a man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, who said to him, Send men to, to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all of your household will be saved. And as, a, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us in the beginning. And then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, Indeed, John, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? Man, Peter's getting a little smarter here, huh? 
When they heard these things, they became, became silent and they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen, they traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, Antioch, preaching the word to no one but to the Jews only. But some of the men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenist, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and the great number believed and turned to the Lord. The Hellenists were Jews, guys. They were just Jews that, that spoke Greek. Then the, then the news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When, they, when he came and he had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all with that purpose of heart that they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. And then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to see Saul. <clears throat> and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So that it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and they taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. And then one of them, named Agabus, stood, stood up and showed by the, by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did, and they sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So chapter 10 and 11 go hand in hand, you guys. What happened in chapter 10 is just retold by Peter in chapter 11. Chapter 10 and 11 are a big deal because this is the first time that the Gentiles get the Holy Spirit. All the way up until chapter 9, we see the Jews and the proselytes receiving the Holy Spirit. So remember in chapter 10, guys, remember in chapter 10, verses 44 and 45, it says that while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word, and the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles also. And then if we go back to Acts 10.43, it says, To him all the prophets witness that through his name, the name of Jesus, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Not maybe, guys, will receive Remission of sins. So I'm referring back to chapter 10 a lot because chapter 10 and 11 go hand in hand. Um, so the, what happened to Peter in chapter 10, what he's doing is he's just retelling what happened to him in chapter 10. He's retelling it in chapter 11. The message is, if you believe, then you will receive. Okay, so I'm going to read this again. So back to, uh, back to Acts 10, 43, it says, To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. So the message in, in this is that if you believe, you will receive. If you believe, you have to truly believe in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, 13 says, Ephesians 1, 13, In him... You also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Isn't that beautiful? You guys, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise when we believe in Jesus Christ, when we surrender our whole life, our heart, our mind, our thoughts, our flesh, everything. We surrender everything to Jesus Christ. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But you know, in order 
in order to truly be saved in the end, we have to endure to the end, you guys. We have to endure. You have to understand that, that we have to endure. We're getting to times where we have to make decisions, okay? It, times are going to get harder and harder and harder, and it's going to get harder and harder and harder for us to follow Jesus. It's going to get harder and harder for us to obey the scriptures. Why? Because everything in the world is contrary to the word of God. We're getting to the point where the foundation of the family, the morals, the foundation, the moral foundation of the family, it's crumbling right before our eyes. Our freedoms are being taken away. This is why it's so important that we make our own decision in our hearts and we stay firmly planted in the word, which is the truth, so that when the storms do come, because they will come, when that wind comes, we're going to still stand, guys. We're going to stand. You see a lot of trees in the bosque, and they're, they're planted by the water, and no matter how windy it gets and how many trees fall throughout the city, those trees in the bosque are still standing. Why? Because their roots are firmly planted in the water. They're being fed every day. We have to stay planted in the living water that comes from Jesus Christ. And that's going to help us, guys, to stay firm when things around us are just falling apart. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. That's not going to be a very long message today because it's kind of chapter 11 is just kind of going back and confirming what was said in chapter 10. So 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. And the word of the Lord says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which you are also saved. If, if, there's that little big word again, guys, if you hold fast that word which I preached you, unless you believe in vain. We have to hold fast to the word of God. We have to hold fast. You know how... You can imagine if you're at the mountains and your child starts falling over the side of a cliff and you're going to reach for your child and you're not going to let go. You're going to grasp onto your child until you can pull him back from the side of that cliff. That's how we have to grasp and hold on to the word of God. Beginning in verse 3 says, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Everything that Paul brings to us is according to the scriptures. In chapter 11, 2 and 3, it says, And those of the circumcision contended with Peter, saying, You went in to uncircumcised men, and you ate with them? So they get in Peter's face because Peter was eating with uncircumcised men. But the thing is, you have to remember, guys, is, look, do you remember when Jesus was eating dinner? At Matthew's house. Matthew was a tax collector. And Jesus was eating dinner at Matthew's house. Other tax collectors showed up, other sinners. And I'm sure Matthew had already spread the word on how him being a tax collector, Jesus called him. So other tax collectors and sinners showed up. So when Jesus was eating dinner at Matthew's house, the Pharisees saw it and said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard them saying this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. 
the Pharisees asked the question about Jesus that they should have known the answer to. Because they were well versed in the scriptures. But the envy that they had over Jesus was blinding them. And this is why Jesus said, go, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. What Jesus was really telling them is that they needed to go back to scripture and relearn what apparently they had forgotten. So let's go to Hosea, the book of Hosea. This is kind of where Jesus was telling them to go. Hosea 6, verses 1 through 6. And the word of the Lord says, and this is Hosea 6, 1 through 6, Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. O oh, Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O oh, Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like the morning cloud and like the early dew that goes away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And your judgments are like the light that goes forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. See, the Pharisees should have known this. Everything that Jesus did pointed to the old scriptures, to the prophecies of the prophets. Everything pointed to Jesus. If they wouldn't have been so blinded by their envy and their anger because he healed on the Sabbath and, and because the disciples plucked corn and ate on the Sabbath because the disciples didn't wash their hands when they ate. They had all these stupid traditions. If they would have been focused more on the old scriptures, they would have realized that Jesus was the Messiah because he was doing everything that was foretold before he was even born. And they should have known this. That's why Jesus said, go and learn this. What he was telling them is go back to the scriptures and relearn. Relearn all these things that you have forgotten. Throughout most of his ministry, Peter had fear of the Jews even though he was the first one to win a Gentile to the Jews. In the beginning, and the early stages of Peter's ministry, he was trying to please everybody. He would eat with the Gentiles as long as the Jews weren't around. And then if the Jews were around, he would pretend, I don't even like the Gentiles. And, and, and pretty much you could say Peter was two-faced for a little while. And then Paul, you should always keep a good friend close to you, a friend that is not afraid to get in your face and tell you the truth. You should always keep those friends close to you. Let me read this again. Throughout most of the ministry, of his ministry, Peter had feared the Jews, even though he was the first to win a Gentile to the Jews. He was the very first. That's just amazing. So in Galatians, let's go to Galatians 2, 11 through 16. So when the Jews weren't around, Peter would eat with the Gentiles. When the Jews were around, Peter would ignore the Gentiles, and he would just hang around with the Jews. And, and you know, I'll, yeah, kind of kind of hang around with them, but I don't really like them. It's kind of like what we used to do in high school. Like, yeah, you know, you're my best friend. And then the next year with somebody else, and, oh, you're my best friend. I don't really like her. I just kind of hang around with her because I feel sorry for her. And this is kind of what Peter was doing in the first stages of his ministry. He was trying to, to please everybody, but he was being two-faced. So then Paul, being a good friend, came and got in Peter's face. So let's go to Galatians 2, 11 through 16. 
excuse me. Now when Peter had come to Antioch, this is Paul speaking. Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if you, being a Jew, live in this manner of the Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel the Gentiles to live as the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that this man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So Paul got in Peter's face right in front of everybody and said, come on, Peter, don't be a hypocrite. What's going on? Don't be a hypocrite. You're trying to, you're trying to lead the Gentiles to Jesus Christ. But then when the Jews show up, then you pretend that you're, you don't want nothing to do with the Gentiles. And so it, that, that was a really good friend. I truly believe that, that Paul got in his face to set him straight and say, Peter, this is not what Jesus called you for. Do you remember, Peter? Let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. Do you remember, Peter, how when you were sitting on the fence and you weren't sure how that caused you to deny your Lord three times? Do you remember, Peter? Come on, Peter, let's get rid of the hypocrisy and let's continue to walk and let's continue to spread the gospel like Jesus called us to do so. And if God has allowed the Holy Spirit to fall upon the Gentiles too, then who are we, Peter? Who are we to deny it to them? So it, it, it was awesome the way that Paul immediately got in Peter's face, but he did it in front of everybody, and he corrected him. Yes, in love, but in firmness. Paul got in Peter's face because Peter was being two-faced. Peter would eat and hang around with the Gentiles as long as the Jews weren't around, but the second a Jew would show up, Peter would pretend that he had nothing to do with the Gentiles. Paul brought correction and accountability right to Peter's face. Thank God for friends who aren't afraid to tell you the truth or to hold you accountable in certain areas of our life. When Peter had the vision and the voice told him to rise, kill and eat, Peter arrogantly answers, Not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything common or unclean. You hear like a little bit of arrogance or a little bit of pride? It was the Lord. It was the voice of the Lord that told him, rise, Peter, and kill and eat. And he's like, oh, no, 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 not so, Lord. No, uh-uh. No, nothing uncommon or unclean has ever come to my lips. Really? The voice of the voice told Peter, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. The object like the sheet descended to Peter three times. That sheet descended. The object like the sheet descended to Peter three times. And I was thinking about that. Why three times? Why three times? Why does Peter, why does it always take three times for Peter to get something? There was other threes in Peter's life. So after Peter arrogantly said, not so, Lord. No, not so. In other words, no, I'm not going to get up and kill and eat nothing. Oh, no, me, like I'm perfect, Peter. Nothing unclean has ever come into my lips. Nothing unclean or common. 
So I think the reason that the sheet, that the thing that was like a sheet came down to Peter three times, kind of to remind Peter the three times that he had denied Jesus, the three times that Jesus had restored him by asking him, Peter, do you love me? In Matthew 15, 10 and 11, it says, When Jesus, when he, Jesus, had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles man. I think that Peter needed to be reminded of of the place and the condition that he was in when Jesus found and called him. Just as sometimes God needs to remind us as well. You know, sometimes, you guys, we can be a little too quick to judge people. We see somebody in a corner holding up a sign. And we think, man, lazy people just don't want to go work. Or they're going to spend the money on drugs or alcohol. We don't know their situation. We don't know their situation. If you're going to give, give from the heart. But you know what? There has been times, and the Bible says, to be careful how you treat strangers because you might be entertaining an angel. And there has been times in my life, my mother-in-law was with me one time, when we stopped to purchase food for somebody and we come out of the restaurant, they're right there by the door, right there standing right by the door. And as soon as we're walking out with the food, they're nowhere to be found. Was it an angel that the Lord put in our path just to test to see? Were we going to judge that person or are we really going to, Feel compassion. James one twenty one says, James one twenty one, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Isn't that beautiful? The Bible gives us a roadmap of everything we need to be saved. It tells us how to live, the things to do, the things not to do, the way to treat strangers, the way to take care of your parents when they're elderly, the way we're supposed to love one another as brothers and sisters. The Bible gives us a roadmap for everything, you guys, everything. And this scripture right here, it might seem like a rebuke from the Lord, but it's actually, it's love because it's telling us what to do to be saved, to save our souls. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness, all filthiness and overflows of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. In, in Acts 11.25 is where the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Isn't that amazing? Do you remember when, when um, Stephen was martyred? And Saul was still breathing threats, and he was, he was going to look for the people of the way, and that's what they were called. They were called of the way. But I don't, I don't know exactly where it came from, whose idea it was. We don't know if it was Peter's, if it was Paul's idea to change the name from the way to Christians. And I think they changed it at that time because a lot of people who were looking to do harm to the Christians, they were looking for people of the way. Mm. 
Wow. In Acts 11, 27 through 30, Acts 11, 27 through 30, going back now to the chapter where we were at, it says that a prophet named Agabus, filled with the Spirit, stood up and said that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world. And then the disciples, each according to his ability, sent relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea by the hands of Saul and Barnabas. Agabus, filled with the Spirit. The importance of staying in the Word so that we're filled with the Spirit and we hear the voice of God. The, the Lord sends us. I don't know if you guys, if it's ever happened to you guys, but you're driving somewhere, and, and sometimes you have, whether it's to work or to the grocery store, you have your same route that you take, right? It's the same route that you take. But for some reason, on a particular day, you hear the voice of the Lord say, don't go down that road, go through here. Or don't, don't do this, do that. If, if you're attuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit, he will lead you and guide you and keep you from danger. But we have to listen and obey. It's not just about hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. We have to obey. There's many times, for example, just the other day, I was going somewhere, and I was going to take the freeway because we leave, we get out of Raymac, and I was going to take the freeway that's over there on Isleta, and I was there, had my blinker on and everything, and the Holy Spirit told me, no, go through Isleta and go through Rio Bravo. Don't go that way. And I don't even question anymore. I said, thank you, God. Because you don't know if he just kept me from being killed or he kept me from a bad accident or killing somebody else. The same happened with Pastor Ed last week. When he was going to come back from El Paso, he just happened to look at his tire, and there was a big nail. He had to have all his tires changed. But see, he, he was able to discern, and he, he just like looked at his tire, and there's something not right. It had a big nail. But when he went to just get that one tire fixed, he discovered that there was really no tread on his tire. He could have had a blowout, had a rollover, had an accident, killed himself, killed somebody else. And even though if he was delayed a few hours, he still got here alive. This is why it's so important to be in tune with the Word of God, to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I can tell you story after story after story where the Lord has saved my life. You know, when I worked at the airport, I was going to work one morning, and it was like 5 in the morning, and it was winter. It was really, really cold. And I have a heart for the homeless. And... And I was going down Rio Bravo, and I was about to get to the train tracks, and something made me look to the left, and there's a bench right there. It's not a bus stop, but it's a bench. And I turned, and I looked, and I saw this homeless man, and it looked like he was freezing to death. He didn't have a jacket. It looked like he was literally freezing to death. And just from the corner of my eye, and I thought, oh, no, i got to go into Giant and get him some coffee. I'll go get him some coffee, and I have a blanket or a jacket in the trunk. And so I'll go really quick, and I'll get him coffee. And I was waiting for the light to turn, to turn green. So I, turn into, I turned into um, Giant, and I get a coffee, and then I go back. And it's like, where is he? He's nowhere. He, he's like nowhere, and I'm looking everywhere, and I'm looking to left and to the right, and this man is nowhere. That bench is empty. It doesn't look like anybody's been sitting there because it's all frozen over. And I'm thinking to myself, did I see something? So going into Giant and everything that, that I did there to go look for the homeless man, everything took me probably about three minutes total. It was just quick. I just knew. I mean, I just really felt this man's freezing to death. I ran in, got a coffee, went back. He's not there. The light turns green, and I'm about to go. And the train just comes rushing by. The, the light malfunctioned, and the, the thing didn't come down. And I slam on the brakes. 
And my car, the front of my car, I slammed on the brakes so hard, the front of my car lifted up from the pressure of the train coming through. I truly believe that that was an angel because if I wouldn't have turned around, went into Giant to get some coffee, as soon as the light turned green, I would have took off right away and I probably would have got killed by that train. But the Lord put an angel on my path to save my life. But if I would have kept going and said, oh, she's not my problem. I'm not the one out there freezing. I probably wouldn't be here today. But it's amazing how God puts things in our path. Sometimes they seem like little delays. But he puts things in our path many times to save our life and to test us. Where's our heart? I'm going to tell you guys of a dream that I had in September of 2019, and then I'm going to begin to close. In September of 2019, I had a dream that something terrible was about to come to the earth, that something terrible was about to take place. And in this dream, like Joseph, the Lord showed me that there was going to be a shortage or a famine of certain things. And I got up in the morning and I told my husband, and then I went and I told my mother-in-law about the dream I had. And this was September of 2019. And in that dream, I remember seeing people running back and forth like in a panic. And I just can remember seeing fields where there used to be crops, empty. And I just remember standing there and having a sense of chaos going on all around me. And the Lord told me, like, Peter, rise, go to the store and purchase and buy. And I'm not talking about something about hoarding, but the Lord told me, I'm going to make you responsible. I'm going to make you responsible for helping many families get through the time that we're, that's about to come. And I just woke up with this urgency, and I told my mother-in-law, I said, I, I need to go. I need to go to the store and purchase certain things. I don't even know what. My dream was like I woke up like freaking out. So I go to the store, and as the Holy Spirit's leading me, canned foods, canned foods, canned foods, and I'm buying, oh, my goodness. I filled up like three baskets. I got home, and you can even look out the windows of my car. I bought canned foods. The, the, the Lord let me through the pharmacy, get Tylenol, get cough medicine, get just, just purchase, 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 purchase. And I'm like, I mean, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm just like freaking out. Okay. And everything that like the Lord's magnifying to me like this and this and, and flu medicine and this and this, and I'm just purchasing. Then I go to Sam's club and I purchase a lot of toilet paper, a lot of paper towels, a lot of Clorox, a lot of, I'm just purchasing, purchasing, purchasing. We even emptied out the storage that we have in the back because the Lord told me, just fill it, fill it. Kind of like he told Joseph, there's going to be a famine. And to collect the grain to feed the people. And I'm, I'm just like feeling a little confused, but I got up that day with an urgency, and usually I wait for the Lord to confirm things to me two or three times, but that dream was so powerful that I said I better obey and I better go and purchase what the Lord taught me to purchase. And I get home, and I'm taking everything out of the car, and I'm making room in the storage, and I put shelves, and I'm organizing everything, and just like canned foods and soups and just a bunch, a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but okay. I just I had to trust in the Lord. And, and then, so that was in September. And then, uh, and then in December of 2019, I got COVID. I got very, very sick. I got COVID before anybody even knew about COVID. My husband took me to hospital. I was passing out. They, they had to massage my heart seven times in the waiting room to keep bringing me back. and bring. I was just passing out, passing out, passing out. 
And, and so I got COVID and I was really, really sick. <clears throat> and so, but I'm thinking, okay, I have a storage room full of stuff. That's going to get bad. Then in, in, it was, I think, the end of January, February, when they came out with COVID, because they had told me I had influenza A. They sent me home with some medicine, sent me home. I had never been that sick. I have had the flu many times, and I had never, ever been that sick. And I even told my husband, I said, this is not the flu, babe. Something's wrong. Something's different. I couldn't smell. I couldn't taste. I was just so sick. I would crawl to the restroom. And, and I knew it was something different, but again, the only thing I would crave was communion, communion. I just want communion. I want communion. Something's not right in my body. And then it was in, in late January and February when they announced the coronavirus and stuff, and I told them, that's what I had. That's what I had. And then in March, we found out about dad having cancer. But the thing is, through the whole time that, that dad had cancer, I was able to avoid going to the store a lot because I had already stocked up what we needed before the Lord. I mean, I had alcohol. I had band You name it. I didn't know why I was purchasing alcohol, peroxide, band-aids, gauze. I was all this stuff and, and, and just putting in. And all that's what I needed to care for Dad when he got sick. And from, from that little storage the whole winter from the time we found out COVID till about July, we were able to keep 14 families afloat. 14 families that lost a lot of time at work because of COVID. We were able to take them boxes and boxes of food and medication and alcohol and peroxide and you name it. And then that dream made perfect sense to me why the Lord was having me do this because he knew COVID's just around the corner. And there's going to be families with people that have asthma, people that have a lot of underlying illnesses that have no business being at the stores and stuff are going to have no way or fear. Fear is going to lock them in their homes and I need you to take them food. So I would pray every day and I would say, Lord, who, who do I provide for today? Lord, who do I take a box of food to? Who? And he pointed out names to me. And every day, my mother-in-law would tell me, you're going to take food again, Mita? Be careful, Mija. I would say, the Lord's going to protect me, Mom. This is why he told me to buy everything that I had to buy so that we could continue to help families. And every day, I would call somebody and say, I'm not even going to get close. I'm not going to go in. Don't worry. I'm going to put a, a box of food at your doorstep, and, and, and then you can get it when, when I drive away. And this is all the Lord. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this to boast on the Lord. I'm saying this to boast on the fact that if you stay in the word, the Lord speaks to you and you hear his voice and you obey. And he was able to provide for 14 families. And I'm sure he did this with many people around the world. And I pray that everybody obeyed so that their neighbors had something to eat. We have a neighbor who's disabled, and I knew when COVID came around, there was no way he was going to be able to leave his home. But he didn't go hungry. He didn't go without, because God provided, just like, he, just like the dream that he gave Joseph. And when his family was starving to death, they were able to go to Egypt because they knew there was food in Egypt. Why was there food in Egypt? Because Joseph obeyed the voice of the Lord. He had a dream and he obeyed. And if you're in the word of God and the Lord puts something on your heart, it will always line up with the word of God. But I thank God because I was not only to provide, I able to provide for my in-laws in a time where I didn't want them going out a lot because they had underlying issues that I didn't want them to. Uh, another person had severe asthma, and, and just the Lord provided for them. But that's the beauty, guys. That's the beauty of being able to walk with the Lord. And when the Lord tells us to spread the gospel, he doesn't always mean for us to open our mouth. I was spreading the gospel without having to say anything. 
And God's amazing. You know, now as they begin to say there's a second round of the pandemic coming around, all oh, this is going to start over again, everything. You know what? Listen to the voice of the Lord. Before anything else, listen to the voice of the Lord. Pray and ask God with all your heart, show me what I need to do. Show me. Winter's coming. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. My advice to you is to begin to stock up with a few things. I'm not saying to hoard like some people took advantage in that time and they were selling toilet paper for $5 a roll. Come on. You know, that, that, that's just greed. But stock up enough to the point where if you have a neighbor that's struggling, you're able to take them something and say, you know what, it's a few meals. It might not be much, but it's a few meals just to let you know. You know, I care for you. Maybe you don't even know your neighbor. It would be a good time to get to know your neighbors. And if you think, well, they're not Christians, they don't know the Lord. Look at Peter. God called him to go into the home of a Gentile and the Gentile and all his family was saved. You never know what God's going to ask you to do, but through that one small action might lead a whole family to Jesus Christ. Through the last pandemic, yes, you know what? There was fear. Yes, there was struggles. Yes, there was a shortage. Yes, they raised the prices of things ridiculously. But still, through these small actions, I was able to minister to a lot of people. God is good and God is faithful. And it's not for us to judge who might deserve the gospel and who might not. Because we have to remember one thing. Where were we when Jesus found us? How dirty were we when Jesus found us? But yet, he showed us that love. We have to take that love that Jesus gave us and not hoard it, but share it with the hurting world. And then just let God do the rest. Plant the seeds, plant the seeds. This is what the disciples did. They went out and they spread the gospel by planting seeds. Paul said, I have become all things to all people. Why? Because he knew how to speak to the rich. He knew how to speak to the powerful. But he knew how to speak to those who were humble, to those who were servants, who those who were slaves. He knew how to speak to everybody. This is why God used Paul in such a mighty way. Because he was able to go down into a ditch and reach somebody just like he was able to go into a kingdom and reach somebody. We should never judge anybody. And Acts 11 shows that we should never show, judge anybody by where they are now. But we have to get, ask God to give us spiritual eyes to see them where they will be and how they will be when they give their life to Jesus Christ. So as I close, before I close in prayer, I just want to say thank you to those who are watching online. Whether you're watching today or you're going to watch in the future, we just pray blessings over you. We ask God's hand of protection over you. I want to let you know that we have service on Wednesdays and on Sundays. Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. and on Sundays at 9 in the morning. Our address is 3250 Coors Boulevard Northwest, Suite B. If you don't have a church and you'd like to come and visit us, feel free to just come. And if you don't have a Bible and you need a Bible, we'll give you one. Because that's what Christ has called us to do, is to spread the gospel, to preach the truth. Because the truth is the only thing that has set us free and the only thing that will set you free. The, the world offers so many different kinds of counseling and programs. And many are good. 
But the only thing that's going to change your life is Jesus Christ. And I know that because I've lived it. So to those watching online, I just want to say good night. Thank you for tuning in. And God bless you. And we're here. If you need anything, please message us. You have a wonderful evening. We're glad that you tuned in. I pray and hope that the message that you just heard was a blessing to you. You know, the Word of God comes in and transforms our lives from the inside out. What an amazing opportunity. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Right now, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity right now, and I would be honored uh, to pray with you right now. If you've never given your life to Jesus, just repeat this prayer with me. And uh, believe in with all of your heart. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that we will be saved. And the Bible also says that Everyone that calls out to the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now, if you just repeat this prayer with me, say, Heavenly Father, I choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead to give me a new life. So now, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I turn away from, from my wicked way of living. I turn my heart to you. From this day forward, I want to serve you and I want to do everything that I can to be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just pray to that prayer right now, I just want to welcome you into the kingdom of God, into his household. If you have a church I, or you don't have a home church, get plugged into your home church, wherever you may be. If you're in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, we would love to have you uh, join us for worship here at Majesty Worship Center. Our address is as follows, 3250 Coors Boulevard, Northwest, Suite B. Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87121. We would love to meet you. We would love to, to fellowship with you. So I just pray that you would get plugged into the house of God. God bless you, and thank you for watching.